Hi, I'm Ryder, creator of the Bullet Journal Method, and today we're going to answer one common question that I get, which is, how do I reboot my Bujo practice? So in today's video, we're going to look at four ways to begin again. When something doesn't work out the way that we had hoped, we often focus on what was wrong with our solution, like maybe it was our plan or our schedule that was the problem. Sometimes that's true, but often there's nothing wrong with your solution. You may have just been trying to solve the wrong problem. When you found the bullet journal method, or calisthenics, or intermittent fasting, or therapy, or meditation, what need did you have? What problem are you trying to solve? What are the things you're trying to learn? Try to get clear on why this is important to you. The first step to starting or restarting your practice is to write down your intention. Writing down your intention will force you to sort your thoughts and clearly define your purpose. If you have set an intention and you still stop bullet journaling, what's going on there? Well, first, let's get clear on what an intention is. An intention, as I define it, is a commitment to a process. That process is acting in accordance with your values and your beliefs. Our circumstances, however, are always changing. And as our circumstances change, so do the things that we value we believe in and the things that we need. If your Bujo practice still focuses on a need that you no longer have, then you won't feel like you need your practice. It's like taking medication for an illness you no longer have. In the best case, it won't help you. And in the worst case, it could actually do more harm than good. If an old intention no longer resonates, set a new one. Ask yourself, what matters now? Like, I want my Bujo practice to help me be more grateful for my relationships, or I want my Bujo practice to help me be kinder to myself, or I want my Bujo practice to help me be more organized in the pursuit of my ambitions. You don't have to overthink it. Remember, you can always change it. Keeping your intentions up to date is critical in keeping the practice relevant. This is why in Bujo we have our daily, weekly, and monthly rituals. They help us make sure that our intentions still resonate that they're still relevant. Updating your intentions will also help you make sure that you're using the right tools for the job, which brings us to the second point. The more complex a system becomes, the more time and energy it takes to maintain. If you're not careful, there comes a tipping point where the system we use to help us become less distracted becomes a major distraction in and of itself. When rebooting your practice, Keep it as simple and focused as possible. Ask yourself, what is the most minimal tool set that I need to keep my actions aligned with my values? What tools, templates, projects, goals, and actions will help you explore your intention? You can also think about your previous experience. What worked, what didn't, what needs to be added, and more importantly, what needs to be taken out? Be ruthless with curating your Bujo practice. Take everything out that you don't need. Add only what you need when you need it and not before. There are many in our community who generously share their notebooks online. And though that's wonderful, I do have mixed feelings about this. On the one hand, our community's willingness to share what they've discovered in their own Bujo practice to help others makes our community so exceptional. On the other hand, sharing for the sake of external validation or doing things because they get more views, likes, etc., can quickly tip our practice into a performance. Then there's a the flip side. There are those who stick very closely to spreads and techniques that they've seen online that don't serve them. When that happens, then they often feel like there's something wrong with the system or even worse, something with them, like they don't get it. Though I think it's wonderful to Bujo with others, I strongly discourage bullet journaling for others. The more we bullet journal for others, the less it will serve our own needs. And that's the most important question. Is it serving you? One question that is helpful here is what would your bullet journal practice look like if you could not share it with others? Chances are it would focus on things that are more urgent, impactful, and be much more honest and relevant. That's when the practice truly shines. The irony is that, of course, is exactly when you find the things we're sharing. Try to meet your failure with curiosity. When something doesn't work out the way that you had hoped it would, you have a choice. You can see it as a dead end, in which case you're right, you'll find a dead end. Or you can perceive the experience as feedback, in which case you're also right, except this time, instead of a dead end, you'll always find a way forward. If you start looking for feedback, you stop failing and you start learning. 
Rather than the door slamming in your face, you'll find valuable information that will open doors you would have never found otherwise. To be clear, curiosity or not, things not working out the way we hoped is hard. That's why meaningful intentions matter so much. Our intentions need to keep inspiring us even when we meet resistance and struggle to understand the feedback from the lessons that we're learning along the way. Despite what you may read online, I've found that it's not really time, effort, or money that keeps us from getting what we want. It's the resourceless stories that we tell ourselves. And two of the most convincing excuses are, one, I have to catch up, and two, I have to wait for the perfect time. Though we can learn from the past, it's gone. And the more time we spend focused on trying to capture it or recreate it, the less time we spend focusing on the present. The present is the only time we have to create what we want. You don't need to catch up. All you need to do is show up. It's not the days that you don't show up that matter, it's the days that you do. We can't predict what will happen, so waiting for the stars to align to restart your practice can end up putting it off indefinitely. Perfect or not, now is all we will ever have. The best time to begin, or to start over, is always now. One thing that I love about bullet journaling is that every day you begin with a blank page. To me, that represents a new opportunity. Whether it be every day, week, month, or year, every time you sit down with your notebook, you begin again. You don't start from scratch. Each beginning is shaped by the beginning before it, and the beginning before that one, and so on. Each beginning becomes more powerful. And the more you begin, the more powerful your ability to create becomes. So in the end, there's really only one question that you need to ask yourself when you're trying to restart your bullet journal practice. What do you want to begin now?